What is up, sons? It is Blind Run once again with Son of a Tech, and I have another head-to-head -head battle for you guys between the RX 480 and the GTX 1060, and the game is going to be the brand new, the spanking brand new Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. How many of these are there going to be? Stick around to find out who wins. Alrighty, so there's been Battlefield, there's been Titanfall, and now there's Call of Duty. They've kind of crammed all these in, and I don't know which one you like the most. Personally, I enjoyed the Call of Duty series more, but I'm kind of getting worn out on all of them. And by more, I mean I'm referencing Battlefield. I'm not a Battlefield guy, which is like blasphemy for the PC Master Race. I know, I'm sorry. But that being said, the kind of bonus you get with the Call of Duty Infinite Warfare is that we get to replay a remastered version of Call of Duty 4 as well, which we will be doing benchmarks for here on this channel as well for these cards too. So specifically, these cards are going to be the XFX GTR, and on the NVIDIA side, it's going to be the EVGA Super Super Clock. Now, the reason both of these cards work well together is because they're both at the top end of the cooler for each respective company while not being the top overclocker so they're a step below the for the win edition on the evga side and the black edition on the xfx side so they do both have a mild overclock we're going to leave what they came with from the factory to us so on the gtr that's going to be about 1288 megahertz while on the NVIDIA side with EVGA, it's a little different because of GPU boost now. As you can see in the GPU-Z shot, we're sitting around 20-25 megahertz. The test bench is going to be an i7-3770K overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz, mated to an ASUS P8 Z77 motherboard. It's the Thunderbolt Pro. And of course, there's 16 gigabytes of DDR3, 1600 megahertz ram and a nice 860 watt corsair power supply the benchmark is going to be in the very first mission of the game once you get past that initial cutscene and get into the game it's going to kind of spawn you in an airplane kind of like every other call of duty i feel like at this point and they're always very guided now i played probably about 10 missions i think i'm pretty close to beating the entire game and i was trying to find a good spot to benchmark and unfortunately there's just some sort of action going on all the time this seemed to be the most consistent what will happen is you'll have a prompt to press space and that's going to make you jump out of the airplane and that's when the benchmark is going to begin so when i begin the benchmark i go ahead and press f11 and space at the same time to start both the benchmark and that action sequence once you do that you will go through a kind of mini game of moving left to right and not getting into the red and then you will have a landing sequence at this point i let the two other computer controlled players get in front of me once they get to the crater i go ahead and pass them and it says the jump and we'll do the jump down portion and when we do that at the very bottom there will be a dude it will press space as another prompt and we'll tackle him and then you have to press v as well to stab him in the fucking net once you've done that the benchmark is going to end there that should be 60 seconds right as you start standing up now this is able to be repeated over and over again and by no means means that this is the most demanding portion of the game but it works for comparison between two graphics cards in this engine as we see it. The settings I will also scroll by here and probably you guys have seen some of them. A quick note is that we do have motion blur off and we have SMAA T2X on. So those are kind of the special settings. Everything else is set pretty much to as high as possible except if we get into the miscellaneous options, we don't have tessellation set all the way out and we have field of view out to 95 because 
I can't stand really any closer than 95, personally. Hopping into the graphs, starting out with 1080p, we have the GTR coming in with the win with a min of 102 FPS, an average of 123, and a max of 128 FPS. The GTX 1060 wasn't really that far behind with a minimum of 95 FPS and an average of 120. 22.3 with a max of 126. It looks like we got a dogfight here, guys. In space, in infinite warfare, AMD versus NVIDIA. Moving on to 1440p, we have the GTR coming out with the win once again with 69 FPS on the min, an average of 104.2 with a max of 127 FPS. The GTX 1060 fell behind with a minimum of 65 FPS, an average of 98.6 and a max of 126. Surprisingly, at 4K, we once again see this gap close even more between the GTX 1060 and the RX 480, with a minimum on the RX 480 of 31 FPS, an average of 54.5, and a max of 80. On the GTX 1060, we had a minimum of 30 FPS, with an average of 52.4, and a max of 81. So in conclusion, which card should you buy i usually don't like doing this for this game though it's really up to you it really is there's no clear clear winner here in my opinion obviously we see the rx 480 take the win but by a very very small fraction very minute and probably within margin of error so fanboys, you can rest easy. There is nobody going to be coming at you with this video saying, look, see, my NVIDIA card or AMD card is better than your AMD or NVIDIA card. And we can all get along and play some motherfucking Call of Duty. Coming up soon, as I said, will be the Modern Warfare Remastered. Those results are actually quite different, so be sure to check back in the channel for that. If you want to see individual reviews of either the EV GTX 1060 Super Super Clock or the XFX RX 480 GTR with the hard swap fans. They will be scrolling somewhere along my body down here per the new card fucking system YouTube's got going. Also, if you guys are enjoying the content, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you already are subscribed, hit that little notification bell. I realize that if you don't hit that nowadays and you aren't completely always watching every single video from your favorite YouTubers, as soon as they come out, they start disappearing out of the sub box. And since I'm pretty small and growing, I need y'all support. So please do that. That'd be awesome. Anyways, until next time, I will see you next Tuesday.